Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a magic picture changer card using several Lawn Fawn sets. I'm using Mermaid for You, Fantastic Friends, You Are Sublime, Life is Good, and Keep on Swimming. So I've stamped all my images onto some Copic friendly cardstock. This is Nina Solar White 80 pound, and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers today. So I'm starting with my mermaid skin, and for those I'm using E51, E53, and E55. I'm just going to color one of them in the video today, but I did both of their skin tones the same. So I'm starting with the E55 for some shadow on their face, arms, and belly, and then blending out with the E53 and the E51. I did the sandcastle the same, and then added R20 for the mermaid's cheeks. Next I'll be doing the mermaid on the left's hair, and I'm using E55, E57, and E59. I'm going to start with that E59 and just do a dark shadow on the front of her hair as it swoops down, and then on the back of her neck as well. And then I'll blend that out with the E57, and then use the E55 right on the top and back of her head where I feel like it would be hitting the light the most. Now these didn't make a perfect blend, so I did go back over these colors with a double layer just to help them um, kind of ease in the transition areas and just smooth out a bit. The other mermaid is going to be a redhead, and I'm using YR23, YR14, and YR18. So I'm starting with the YR18 again, close to her, uh, the back of her neck, and also on the front of her bangs as they kind of lift up, so it's towards the roots. And then blending up with the YR14, and then filling in the top with the YR23. This is going to just give me a little bit more of a natural redhead shade. And then again, just like with the brunette mermaid, I'm going to do a double layer just to help make all of these colors really blend well. For the mermaid's tails, I'm using G17, G19, and G28. So I'm doing a shadow along the left-hand side there towards the back of her body, and then um, using the G19 as my midtone, and then blending out with the G17. And then I'll do the other mermaid's tail and a couple of the sea plants the same. And I also did the fins on the eel. And then for her little bikini top, I'm using V04, V06, and V09. Just blending from the outside toward the center with each of those shades darkest to lightest. And then the redhead mermaid, I'm going to give her a bright pink bikini top. So I'm using RV13, RV14, and RV17 for that. And I did also do just a little bit of darkness in the center to kind of accentuate that. For the eel's body, I'm using YG05, YG07, and YG09. I'm going to put the dark shadow on the underneath of his body, and then blend up with the YG07, and then fill in the top with the YG05. Since these are under the sea, I'm just imagining that my light source is coming down from above. Of course, if it was really far down, there wouldn't be much light, but um, I guess where I'm having my scene set, it's not that far down under the sea. I'm using Y11, Y13, and Y15 for the two angelfish, and then B02, B04, and B06 for the stripes in the center. And I'm also going to color in the little school of fish over on the right hand side with those same shades. For the little rock, I'm using W1, W3, and W5. And I'll also do the little clamshell in those shades. I try to use each of those color combinations in more than one area on the card. And then I'll trim these out with the matching dies. So I've got the two mechanism pieces to the Magic Picture Changer, and I'm just sketching out the opening so that I know where to stamp my images inside. 
I'm going to use my Misty to do that. So I'll pop the long one into the Misty first. This one is four and a quarter wide by 11 tall. And I'm stamping out the crab and some grasses and the closed clam from Keep On Swimming. And then on the shorter panel, which is four and a quarter by five and a half, I'm stamping the open clam that reveals the pearl inside. So I'm going to color in both of these panels. I'm just going to do the one on camera because they're basically the same and I'm using the same colors. I'm using R29, R39, and R59 for my crab and I'm just doing my shadow on the bottom area of his body and his claws and also doing a little bit of shadow on his feet just to separate those out. And then I blended with the R39, and then I'm going to fill the rest of him in with the R29. And I did also stamp out a mask for each of these images off camera, so I'll be using those in just a bit. I'm going to color in the seagrasses with YG05, YG07, and YG09. So these are the same three shades that I used for the body of the eel. And then for the clamshell, I'm using W1, W3, and W5. So again, I use these on the clamshell in the um, rest of the images and also on that little rock. So I'm just doing a little bit of shadow between each of those scallops and on the bottom edge and then blending out with the W3 and then I'll use the W1 for the inside of the clamshell. And I also decided to add in the W00 just to soften that up. Then for like the meat of the clam, I'm using R000, R00, and R01. I ended up not even using the R000 because there wasn't really enough area uh, to use that, so I just used the darker two shades. And then for the pearl, I'm using BV00 around the outside edge, and then I'm going to take the colorless blender and just kind of soften up the center of that because I didn't want it to get too dark. I'm going to cover those images with the post-it masks that I made and then I'm going to blend on some tumbled glass distress oxide ink and I'm just starting at the top and pulling that color down so it softens at the bottom and I'm going to do this for both of the panels. And then I also need to make two additional panels, one for the magic picture changer add-on and then one for my background since I'm going to be using the Magic Picture Changer add-on in the opposite orientation from what it was designed for. So I, um, the background panel that goes around it isn't going to fit. So I'm using the Tumbled Glass Distress Ink in the center and then I'm blending on some Broken China and then just softening that transition. And then I'm also going to bring in some stormy sky around the outside edges. And again, I'm doing this identical for both of the additional panels, but just sharing the one on screen. And then I'm just gonna go back and blend all those transition areas once again. I'm gonna grab an acrylic block and tap on some of the Broken China and Stormy Sky Distress Ink. I'm going to water that down a bit with my distress sprayer and then pick that up with a paintbrush and tap it all over the background to create some nice little dots. Then I'm going to create a sandbar using another piece of cardstock and the Lawn Fawn Simple Stitch Hillside Borders and I'm sponging on antique linen and brush corduroy distress ink and I'm sponging that on from the top down so that it accentuates that stitching line and then I'm going to do the same thing by just tapping some ink onto an acrylic block and watering that down and then creating some speckle detail and then I'll set all of these panels aside to dry. So now it's time to assemble the magic picture changer so I'm going to add some very thin 
score tape to the little tabs that are created by the die and I'm going to do it on both the front and the back. I'm using eighth of an inch score tape so it just fits on those little um, folded tabs and then once I have that all in place I'm going to flip that over and peel off the release papers from the ones on the back and then I can fold those in to create the channel for the next part of the mechanism to slide between. I'm going to fold down the top score line that the die also creates and then I'll grab my second piece. I'm going to use a little bit of a powder tool to just go over all of the little lines and cuts and help everything slide more smoothly. Then I'm going to take the top tab from the smaller one and insert that into the cutout on the larger piece and just make sure that that is pulling through nicely. And I decided to add a little bit of the powder tool there as well just to help that um, go through the track better. And that was much better. I did it also on the edges of the tab. And now I'm just going to take those little tabs and weave them through into the back ones on the left hand side. And then I can pull everything together and see that my picture is changing. And I'll test that out a few times to get that really moving nicely. I think the more you play with this one, the better it works. And I'm just going to make sure that everything is aligned on the inside part and then I can peel off the release papers from that tape and make sure that there is no adhesive hanging over into the track and then close that up. Still works. <laughs> I added another thin piece of that adhesive tape to the top and bottom of the Magic Picture Changer uh, mechanism and then I'm going to line up the Magic Picture Changer add-on right over top and I did die cut that out of one of those blended panels that I created. And then before I assemble the card, I did want to stamp the inside sentiment and a few images. I'm stamping out You're a Pearl and then a little fish and the pearl from Keep on Swimming. I'm also going to stamp out a sentiment on some white cardstock that says Hope Your Day is Fantastic and I use the Lawn Fawn Black Licorice ink for that. Then I'm going to take my background panel, which I trimmed down with the large stitch rectangle stackables. And then I've added some foam tape to the back of my Magic Picture Changer so that it will be easier to pull the tab. And I'm just going to add that tab to the top. I die cut that out of the center piece of the Magic Picture Changer add-on. So that was perfect. And then I'm going to adhere this in the opposite orientation from how it's created. It's actually meant to go on a card that is um, the portrait style instead of landscape, but I just wanted to switch it up today. So I'm going to also add some foam tape on either side of the Magic Picture Changer and then add a little liquid glue to the center of my sandbar, just making sure that none of that liquid adhesive is going to actually touch the magic picture changer because then it wouldn't slide anymore. So I just made sure that that was down nice and low. And then it's time to decorate my scene. So I'll be adding my two mermaids with some foam tape and then I'll be using a combination of foam tape and liquid glue for the rest of my images. I'm adding the eel at the top of the magic picture changer just to help that incorporate a little bit better into the scene. And then I'm going to add in my corals and sea plants, tucking them either in front or behind the sandbar just to kind of um, create a little bit of depth in my scene. And then I'll add in my seashells and my fish. And the only image that I didn't end up using was the larger yellow fish. I ended up not having any room for him on the card, but all of the other images made it into the scene. So all that's left is to adhere my sentiment, which I trimmed down with a Lawn Fawn Everyday Sentiments banner. And I'm just going to add that with some liquid glue and make sure that it's nice and straight on the card. 
And that is going to complete my card for today. There's another peek at the inside, and I'll show you again how that mechanism works. I think this is a super fun die set to have in your arsenal. I love how it makes it look like the crab is holding that clamshell, which is opening to reveal that pearl inside. So if you guys enjoyed today's video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I would love to have your support. You can also hit that notification bell if you want to make sure that my videos always end up in your feed. If you'd like to keep on watching, here are two extra videos I thought you might also be interested in, so feel free to check those out. I hope you all have an absolutely amazing day. Bye-bye.